Today, we're discovering KOTU. The surfers also call it center of the universe. We'll see how you really celebrate the brat. Hold up your trophy. And give you many more ways to Sheboygan. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. Hi everyone, I'm Emmy Fink. We all know Sheboygan is the broad capital of the world, but you'll be amazed to learn at what else there is to do right here in this lakeside destination. Many people are surprised to discover Sheboygan's maritime lifestyle along Lake Michigan's shoreline, midway between Milwaukee and Green Bay. One of the first things to do when you get to Sheboygan is head to the lakefront, and there's good reason why. The Sheboygan Harbor serves as an ideal marina, perfect to dock your boat or simply stroll along the boardwalk. There are plenty of shops and places to just sit back and relax. And for a lakeside overnight stay, you might consider Blue Harbor Resort. Simply beautiful. Lake Michigan and the Sheboygan River play a vital role in the community, not only for its residents, but also for its visitors. We were there during Harbor Fest, helping them celebrate on and off the water. On land, kids discovered their own entertainment. One, two, go! And everyone admired the rugged skills during the Shears Lumberjack Show. I'll have to give that a try sometime. On the water, I jumped right into the little boat race as part of the Coast Guard team. Go! This is one competition I took very seriously. Come on! Come on! Whew. After that little excursion, I needed to give my arms a rest. So I hopped on a boat to take in the open water and learn just how important Sheboygan is to the sport of sailing, and not just in Wisconsin. We started with a grassroots effort a couple years ago to uh, get women's match racing into the Olympics, in the, in the 2012 Olympics. And by starting here, it kind of snowballed out into you know, the international community. Yeah, we were able to get it into the 2012 Olympics. How big of an accomplishment is this and for these women that really live and breathe this every day? I think they really like it. I mean, we've got a lot of activity. These, the girls that you're seeing here today are kind of the, well, there's a couple teams from Brazil that are striving to be the Brazil representative in the Olympics. Watching these match races up close and personal gave me a whole new appreciation for this sport. The rules, strategy, and skill needed to compete were more complex than I could have imagined. Fortunately, Rick gave me some pointers along the way. And when they're sailing like that, boat five is actually, the, the wind that's coming off the sails is disturbing the wind that's on boat two sails. Oh, okay. Yep, there's definitely an art and science of racing a sailboat. I wanted to learn even more, so I went to another expert with a pretty important job. A match racing, which you're seeing here, is just one boat against one boat. It's like wrestling. And in wrestling, there's moves. If one person does one thing and they go for a shoot, then you have a counter move. And depending on the counter move, you have a move to that counter move. And I come in and train them uh, all the moves. So we teach them how to handle their boat, how to go fast, and how to be killers. I'm just having to look over my shoulder right here. We get the action coming right into our living room. <laughs> what um. is this like for you to watch <laughs> this after you've trained these women for a few days? You know, I'm noticing, oh, a little more rudder angle there. Oh, a little more weight there. Oh, maybe turn there. <laughs> you know, I'm just invested in the, in, the, in the science of it all. Sheboygan and the entire state of Wisconsin should be extremely proud of getting this women's sport into the Olympics. With the generous support of Terry Kohler, the Sheboygan Yacht Club, and the U.S. Sailing Center in Sheboygan, these women will be competing for a spot on an international stage for years to come. Wondering why Sheboygan is such a hot spot in the sport of sailing? Just log on to discoverwisconsin.com and hear more expert information from Dave. 
We're heading back to the water later in the show to see if I have what it takes to sail. And we'll go surfing. Oh yeah, surfing. But coming up next, we're celebrating big time in the bratwurst capital of the world. <laughs> Stay tuned. Awesome, congratulations. Thank you. How do you, Sheboygan? We're giving you ideas on Discover Wisconsin. While not everyone in the United States may know what a brat is, or even the right way to pronounce it, if you live or vacation in Wisconsin, odds are you've sampled one in your lifetime. Puts down 14 bratwurst today. You're a winner. Thousands of people converge on Sheboygan during this annual event, and it's been going on for years. Well, it's been going on since 1953. This is our 58th year of brat days. Eat, chew. Can I ask how many brats you possibly go through in this four days? Uh, I would estimate it's going to be about 15,000, maybe a little more than that this weekend. It's amazing how many ways Sheboygan finds to use the brat. Everything from brat tacos, brat egg rolls, and brat jambalaya. Mmm, spicy. The brat capital of the world not only eats a lot of brats, they make a ton as well. We went behind the scenes at one of Sheboygan's award-winning brat companies. The brats are special because uh, it's, a, it's the same formula that we've been making since the early 40s. Chuck Miesfeld the first was the first sausage maker that came up with the formula, and it hasn't changed much since. Well, we didn't get any of the family recipes from Eric, but the secret's out on Meesfields, as they make over 5,000 brats a week during the summer. Besides their traditional recipe, they craft over 30 different flavors, and the flavors just keep coming. Every year we have a contest, and uh, people can uh, decide what they think would be the next new flavor, and we picked two of them. This year it was Hawaiian and bacon cheeseburger. There are so many flavors and recipes you can make at home, it's enough to make your head spin. Log on to our website and choose Sheboygan as your destination for links to all sorts of recipes. And if you're looking for something other than brats, Sheboygan has that too, like Frankie's, where they boast a 12-inch hamburger. This I have to see. So I saw, but regrettably, I did not conquer. And if you want some authentic, honest-to-goodness Italian food, Stefano's is the place. So typically, you're not going to just see spaghetti and meatballs. This is authentic Italian. What does that mean? Well, they don't eat meatballs on spaghetti in Italy. They eat meatballs, but they eat them as a second course. And they eat spaghetti with tomato sauce, but they don't eat the two together. But if somebody wants it, I make it for them. They're coming back, they love this place, but part of that is because you send your employees to Italy Absolutely. to learn those traits. Right. We've taken numerous trips over the years. Usually a group of between five and eight people will go. And when you can come back and serve a dish that you just made with someone the week prior, it, uh, it carries some weight. So you really, it helps to go there and to show them the importance of food in life in Italy. I couldn't wait to sample the dishes at Stefano's. But it ended up that I was going to have to work for my meal. This is called the Rigatoni alla Bergamasca, from the town of Bergamo in northern Italy, north of Milan. My son had it last year in June. We were there visiting, and he loved it so much, wouldn't share. But we got the recipe. We came home. We put it immediately on the menu. So we're going to start off with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil and a small amount of butter. We use a special High-fat Wisconsin butter has incredible flavor. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to let that just warm up a little bit, and then I'm going to put in some Italian sausage. And this is Willow Creek Farms, and they're near Baraboo, Wisconsin. It is an incredible product. And because I have to go wash my hands, I need you to help me now. What can I so do? So you need to reach and get a big handful of those mushrooms there, those local organic mushrooms from St. Louis, Wisconsin, based near Madison. I'm going to have you put a little bit in there. That's perfect. We continued to add ingredients, including another key element. And the real secret to this dish is this cheese called fossa. And what that is, is it's a sheep's milk cheese from Emilia Romagna. So you can see what we do a lot here is we take the most incredible local ingredients and then pick ingredients from around the world that are also at the absolute top of quality and bring the two things together. Okay, 
So we could spend the entire episode at Stefano's and his other amazing restaurants. You'll just have to trust me, it was delicious. Hear more stories of Stefano's travels by visiting our website and choosing Sheboygan as your destination. After this short break, we're staying downtown to do a little hands-on shopping. Plus, we'll satisfy your need for speed and show you where. Have you found a way to Sheboygan? Here's more on Discover Wisconsin. We're here today at Road America in Alcart Lake, also known as America's National Park of Speed. So, let's get started. What do you get when you carve a four-mile, 14-turn racetrack into Wisconsin's farmland? Some would argue one of the best road courses in the country. We attract all the major disciplines of uh, sports car racing uh, and motorcycle racing here. We don't sell a ticket for just a three-hour race in a sizzling grandstand. When you come out with your motorhome or your camper, the family, the big wheel, the barbecue grill, and the cooler, and you have a great time. While annually there are around 10 race events during the season, the Road America grounds offer a lot more. Additionally, we have a lot of group events. We did 440 events last year, and, and you know, you know, our season's only 190 days long. So, we do group events for corporations and for individuals. Everything from weddings to geocaching and karting, paintball. Take a look at this year's race schedule by logging on to our website and choosing Sheboygan as your destination. Downtown Sheboygan bustles with life as much as its waterfront. Stroll through Fountain Park on Wednesdays and Saturdays during the farmer's market for the area's best seasonal produce and flowers. Mmm, now that smells good. Expect the unexpected at the John Michael Kohler Art Center, an internationally renowned sanctuary of amazing works, performances, and activities. Stroll through the Four Season Gardens, wander through whimsical galleries, or take in a world-class performance. And don't forget the best part, the restrooms. Come see why ABC's Good Morning America touts them as America's best bathrooms. Admission to the Art Center is complimentary, so it's definitely a must-do. Evenings are electric, as the Stephanie H. Weil Center for Performing Arts brings in classic films, concerts, and special events. Designed in a Spanish colonial revival architectural style, it portrays an atmospheric movie theater of the 1920s. And if shopping for that truly unique gift sounds appealing, we found an intriguing place. Olive View 426 may appear to be a simple bath soap and lotion store, but the founder decided to make it a hands-on experience. Caitlin, I am really excited. I have never before made any of my own cosmetic soaps or lotions. So this is, this is really exciting. So how do we get started? Um, well, it's really, really actually easy uh, once you know what you're doing. It's a lot of the ingredients that you can get right out of your kitchen cupboard, believe it or not. So what we're going to start with today is what we call uh, glycerin soap. We've melted this down, and now we're going to add some of the items that you picked out. You wanted some product that had a little bit of an exfoliant, so we selected some walnut shell powder, and then a few of the blueberry seeds just for some added texture. How did you get started in all of this? Well, it started from a need. I had a gentleman friend of mine who got burned uh, building a track, and so the nurse didn't want him using any store-bought products because she felt it was a gimmick. She wanted something that was actually gonna help heal. So she gave me the recipe for a lip balm base, and I went home to make it. So I um, followed the recipe, ended up with about 500 lifetime supplies, and thought, uh, what am I going to do with all of this? And from that, now you have this store with how many products? We're up to over 120. We started with five, and we just slowly add more and more. We experiment and learn how to do it and add it to the line. All right, now you're going to be able to go ahead and just pour that. Being careful because it's a little warm. Perfect. Learn how to customize your own cosmetics and products by visiting discoverwisconsin.com and choosing Sheboygan as your destination. But I definitely recommend coming into the store. This has been a blast. Thanks, ladies. When we come back, we finally find the perfect wave for some of the best surfing in the country. No kidding. We're finding out how you Sheboygan today on Discover Wisconsin. 
Earlier in the show, we learned that the Lake Michigan water near Sheboygan is a sailor's dream. But to find out even more, I asked for an outsider's perspective. So sailing is truly your life. You live in Connecticut. What is it like for you to come to Sheboygan and see how this, the lifestyle is here? Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, the best thing about sailing is that you get to go all kinds of different places. In fact, here in Sheboygan, there's three or four different locations where you race, and each one of them is different. Sometimes we're out in the lake, and it's wide open and big waves. Now we're right up against the shore here, where you know, the, the, the land becomes a factor. So it's, uh, it's great. Watching all these lady competitors inspired me to give sailing a try. Should I pull it towards me? Yes. After serving as skipper for Maggie and Darby, I thought I was ready to try sailing on my own. So I enlisted the services of Matt, who is the lead instructor for Sheboygan Youth Sailing, to show me the ropes. Here we've got a 420 sailboat. It's a two-person boat. This itself is the hull. On the hull, we've got a rudder. This is what we're going to use to steer the boat. And you're going to control the rudder with the tiller. Next, we've got the mast. Yeah, this is the smaller sail on the front of the boat. Okay. The boom is right here. It's what the bottom of the sail goes on. And then we've got the main sheet. Matt went on to point out everything about the boat. I was pretty sure I was catching on. I think we're ready to go. Let's raise this boom and get going. I think we should go to an easier boat for now. How about we take you out in one of these nice little beginner boats here? Does it have a Okay, boat? so I needed to downsize a little bit to get started, but I can officially say I am now a sailor. Don't let go of your tiller. Ah! Sailing's not the only thing you can do here at the Sheboygan Lakeshore. Let's give paddle boarding a try. It's true. Lake Michigan, especially in the Sheboygan area, offers plenty of recreational opportunities. But would you believe me if I told you that surfers also flock to Sheboygan? Lake Michigan is 22,440 square miles of open water. It's not a lake. It's an inland ocean. But the best part is we've never had a reported shark attack. <laughs> uh, we've had plenty of frostbite, but no shark bite. And, did uh, he say frostbite? <laughs> he sure did. That's because the best waves in Sheboygan hit between September and April. So you better bring your dry suit. To celebrate the beginning of the surf season, Larry and Lee Williams began the Dairyland Surf Classic every Labor Day weekend since 1988. It's a gathering of the tribes. It's surf clubs from throughout the Great Lakes that come together in this aloha spirit, this sharing and caring. That is somewhat a Midwest attitude um, that we're proud of our beaches and we're proud of our waves. Go! The competition is fun but it's more so to get together and hang out with friends and share stories and stuff. We've got some people from Hawaii, California, Florida, Michigan, Indiana, a bunch just showed up from Lake Superior, and uh, they come in from all over. The waves weren't too fierce when we were there. Okay, I admit, they were non-existent, but that didn't stop the event from being a blast for everyone as they competed in all sorts of other board events on Lake Michigan. They all knew that this is just the start of the surf season, and it wouldn't be long before they'd be riding the big mama, as surfers call it. As you can see, there are hundreds of ways to Sheboygan. Just go to discoverwisconsin.com to check it out. I'm Emmy Fink, and join us next week as we continue to cowabunga throughout the state. For more information and bonus video from the episode, go to discoverwisconsin.com. While you're there, click on the Kadiddle link to watch entire episodes from this season or past season. And don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discover Wisconsin Radio all across the state. So one of the girls on the back says bra. They um, all say bra? She's from Brazil. Okay. Oh, and Brazil. <laughs> I got it.